Hello everybody, Hooded Cooper Commander 788 here, and it's time for another G.I. Joe vehicle unboxing and assembly. And this time, we are doing the G.I. Joe Retro All Striker and Driver Crankcase. This is not the vintage All Striker, this is the Walmart Retro version. This vehicle was sent to me by Jeff Ball, he left a note. Thank you to Jeff, without your help, this would not be possible. And I found my toolbox, so I will be able to assemble this vehicle with the tools that I use usually used for this purpose. Let's open this guy up and get started. Let's take a look at the box. It has the artwork that is very similar to the vintage 1985 box art. We've got a window pane here so you can see the crankcase action figure. I did damage the box a little bit on this side, taking Jeff's notes off. Sorry about that. Uh, but we've got basically the same thing on this side. And we've got a photo of the vehicle on the back and we have a file card but with the text in lots of different languages this doesn't have much text really at all it's just broken up into uh, several sections with a bunch of different languages i'm sure this is done so they don't have to issue different boxes with different languages for different countries and regions but it does mean this file card is not very fun to collect and read i'm cutting the tape on the damaged side so Let's open it from that end, and usually these are in some kind of a tray, a cardboard tray, and yes, that's correct. So just pull this tray out, and everything should come with it. Pretty tightly packed in there. Hang on, I don't want to damage anything. There we go. Okay, uh, we have uh, the figure on this card, and it... Uh, it's taped on, it may also be glued on, but it looks like you can take the figure out of the plastic uh, and without damaging the plastic, which means you can put it back in if you want to put the vehicle and the figure back in the box. So that's nice. We have, in poly bags, the main body of the vehicle. It looks like it's mostly already assembled. I think the vintage toy would have been less assembled than this. Uh, that'll make it easy. That'll make it very easy for us to put together. We have the smaller bits, uh, the cannon, the antenna, uh, the figure stand for the figure in this bag. We have four wheels, and that is all that's in that bag. And here we have the paperwork. The instructions should be in here. First things first, we've got to open this and get the instructions out before we can start putting it together. It does have some instructions and blueprints like the... Uh, original. That's just some legal disclaimers. Uh, there is the sticker sheet. Nice. Uh, and here are the instructions. And I believe it has blueprints, but they're really small. Very small printing there. And there are the instructions. Only five steps. That should be really easy. These poly bags are taped closed. They're not actually sealed. And uh, that's nice. So I guess we could put these items back in the bags if we wanted to. Uh, I, I have no idea if you can unassemble this thing after it's been assembled. But if it's possible, then you could put the whole thing back the way you found it and store this thing in its original box. Wheels out. All right, let's just lay these out so we know what we're working with here. That goes with the figure. We've got a connector hose slash wire here. Um, this is similar to the vintage All Striker, but yeah, this is much more assembled than the vintage one would have been. Uh, some of these parts, I'm quite sure, were not uh, assembled out of the box when you first got the All Striker in 1985, but that is fine. Okay. There's the, the roll cage, set that there. And here's the main chassis and body. And there's a piece of cardboard here um, holding the, um, the spring suspension in place. We'll take that out. So yeah, it does have the same suspension that the original did, that, that is nice. It seems to have all of the same features as the vintage, uh, but I, I do notice like the gray on the axles and the other accessories, the steering wheel and such, um, that is in a lighter shade of gray 
than the original. A lot of my vintage G.I. Joe toys are still boxed up, and I'm not 100% sure where the vintage Awe Striker is. Maybe I can find it and show a side-by-side -side comparison once this is assembled. Step one is easy. You just pop the wheels on, and uh, there are mushroom clips, which means the mushroom clips will show uh, on the wheels. There are no hubcaps to cover those. Uh, that is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine, but eh, it might still be all right. We do have steering uh, on the front wheels. It does steer. Very nice. It is not linked to the steering wheel, though. That would have been a cool addition if they had managed that, but that was not a feature on the vintage All Striker, so it's no surprise they didn't add it for this. And there we go. Uh, what next? Step two is this roll cage. And this just snaps in in these holes. Uh, and yeah, these clips here clip on there. And this roll cage is flexible enough that it really should not be any problem to, to get this on. It should not be forced, at least I don't think. Uh, of course, make a liar out of me. Make me force this thing on. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, no, it's fine, it's fine. Not a big deal, not a big deal. Uh, so there are six points, three on each side where this connects. It did take a little bit of force to get it started, but once it was started, it went in quite smoothly. Uh, these front connections are clips rather than pegs, and they seem to be taking a little bit more effort. Yes, this makes me nervous. I don't want to break the thing. There we go, there we go. There's one. Get the other one in, and it kind of it kind of does have to be coaxed in there. Come on, there we go. Okay, roll cage is on, looking pretty good. Next step, the antennae. Two, in a lighter gray plastic than the vintage, so you're not going to get these mixed up with the vintage antennae. Um, also, on my vintage All Striker, uh, it seems to be missing the antenna. Um, I don't know what happened to them, but I do remember when I was packing it away that the antenna uh, and the two antennae were gone. And um, I'm sure I took them off for some reason, but uh, apparently I didn't put them on or put them in a good spot. Now the vintage All Striker had a removable engine cover. Oh, and this one does as well. The engine cover comes off. Is the engine removable? It is. So these features are also the same as the Vintage All Striker. Uh, engine is a separate piece and can be removed, and the engine cover can be removed as well. Uh, there we go. So there's that. Step four is to place this, this cannon in this peg here, or this hole, this peg and this hole on the top of the roll cage, and that since that roll cage is a bit thin, I'm gonna give it a little extra support with my hand under it. And that, that yeah, that's all the way in. So we've got rotation. Like with the Vintage All Striker, it doesn't quite go 360, it runs into these antenna, um, but it does elevate, that's got good elevation. Uh, now, the last piece is this little tiny black connector wire or hose, whatever you want to call it. This could be a challenge because that is really thin and it needs to fit on this peg and, uh, and this peg here. There's a peg here and a peg here. So it needs to run from one side to the other. So let's see how easy it is to get this on. It is a tight fit. Oh, it's a really tight fit. It, it's working though. It's working. All right, so it's on this little uh, device here on the dashboard, passenger side, and then it's supposed to run uh, to this. Let me see if I can do it on this side so you can actually see me assemble it. That would be cool, huh? Uh, I would be really devastated if I broke that peg off. Man, that is a tight fit, though. That's a tighter fit than the other peg. I think this peg is thicker. Okay, but we've, we've about got it. Okay, it took some doing, but there is the wire. That's a similar to, uh, to the vintage All Striker, but the wire was a bit different. Um, but it's same idea, same idea. 
works the same though. Okay, uh, so that's it for the assembly. Now we need to put the stickers on. Here is the sticker sheet, and I have my tweezers, which I prefer to use to put the stickers on. And the a lot of the uh, the text is white on a white background, so it's going to be a little tricky to see this uh, to pick out the correct sticker to put on. Let's start with this side, and I'm sorry I'll have to do this on the side that is not facing you so that I can put this on correctly. Uh, but I'll turn it around so you can see. Let's start with that one because it looks like it will be a difficult one to put on. Uh, and it is really small text in white, and wow, um, I'm going to have to find it. I think it's that one. This, unlike on the vintage G.I. Joe sticker sheets, these are not numbered. If they were numbered, of course, I would just look for the correct number and, um, and put that on. Um, but instead, it, has, it just has a picture or a diagram of the sticker, which would be fine. That would be fine uh, if the white text on white background were a little easier to read. Once I pull it off, I can actually look at it more easily and make sure I've got the right one. Um, and that is not the right one. Where, the, where does this one go? This has some text that says spot check. And where is that? Oh, that is confusing. Oh, I don't like this. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set the sticker aside until I figure out where it goes. We're not off to a great start here. Um, I, I'm, I'm having some trouble with the stickers on these retro collection vehicles. Uh, we have a sticker here that does not appear to be on the diagram. At least if it is, I'm not finding it anywhere. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's find, I can, I, I found that one. There's a, a black background white text sticker that says gas. Petrol, for those of you outside of the United States. We call it gas, short for gasoline. Lovely, okay. Hey, we got one sticker done. We got one sticker done. That's, that's, uh, that's a start. These stickers are die cut, but like with the His Tank, they could be cut a little better because uh, I'm, I'm struggling to get this off and I don't wanna, I don't wanna damage it. I just want a little corner. I want to get under a little corner of it. Got it. And it is more or less undamaged. This goes in this section right here. Let's get that even. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Okay, well, hey, look, we have two stickers applied. Oh, I see. It's a wraparound. Okay. Because it wraps... Okay, it, there are two of them, and they're supposed to wrap around this... Uh, round post for the antenna. Okay. No problem. The uh, sticker sheet does not show it in that shape, but that's definitely the one. And yeah, I didn't pull the sticker off very well. Let me straighten this out. With this shape, it should wrap nicely around that base. Okay, so now I've got three stickers. Let's keep going. This is what you all tune in for, right? This is riveting stuff. Um, I want a G.I. Joe logo. Yeah, that's what I want. I want that right now. I want the G.I. Joe logo. I have assembled a few vintage G.I. Joe vehicles, including 80s vehicles, right out of the box. Putting the stickers on was my favorite part of it. It was like this zen experience. But not so with the retro line. Not so. Requires a bit more concentration. Okay, G.I. Joe logo goes here. That looks nice. I like that. I like the G.I. Joe logo. That actually looks good. Oddly, it doesn't show the American flag being put on the side. On this side, it shows it on the other side, but at least we know where it's supposed to go. It's an American flag that is red, white, and clear. So instead of white stripes, we have green stripes because there's a... It's on a green vehicle. Still, looks okay. Better than not having it. There are three sizes of stars. There is... Let me, let me figure this out, because if I put a star in the wrong space, then it's really going to mess up the whole thing. 
the larger star will not fit there. So that has to be the medium-sized star that fits on the back. And then the two smaller stars fit on the sides here and here. According to the box art and my recollection of the vintage vehicle, the large star should go dead center on the uh, the front hood there. A sticker that says watch and a sticker that says head. This side it's a single sticker. On this side it's two separate stickers because the post where you plug in the wire is in the way. So they had to split it into two. And I found them. I found them. This is a wide sticker that is supposed to fit on a narrow little bar. I guess that works. That's weird though. So that that's these two stickers on the roll cage there. This goes... Oh, I gotta get a different angle. Got it. Okay. Coming along. This one goes here, but then this spot check one, we still haven't found. We'll figure that out later. Okay, this side is done. This side is done. This is another wide sticker, so it will have to wrap around like the other two. I'm happy to have new G.I. Joe stuff on the shelves. I'm happy to have, you know, new stuff on the market for old and new collectors. You know, new stuff and, you know, things that are, you know, re-releases of the old stuff. That's nice. That's nice. Not a bad thing. I truly do not understand some of the choices just on the... On the small things, like like how they die cut the sticker sheet, I don't get it. I hope you guys are enjoying the new slate of videos. Uh, now that I have more time, I can produce more. And I'm also trying to take my time and improve the quality. That is something that, uh, that I do need to get better on. Especially, like, some of the audio quality is really bothering me on some of the vi videos. Uh, and I'm actively working to improve that. So uh, if that is something that you've noticed, don't worry. I've noticed too, and I'm working on it. Okay, well, that kind of worked. That worked better than I thought. So there's there's that. This at least hasn't had a sticker that egregiously, you know, uh, re refuses to fit in the space like on the his tank. We haven't run into that yet. I do like how the stickers add just to these little touches of extra detail and color. That was always the best thing about vintage vehicles is, you know, these stickers add something. You know, the, they couldn't do paint applications on the vehicles. At least they didn't do paint applications on most of them. Um, so to add these tiny little details that made them feel more real, they did it with these vinyl stickers. And for the most part, it worked pretty well. One, one went really easily. Get the stars and stripes. Even though there are no stars. And there are only red stripes. Yeah, close enough, though. The G.I. Joe logo. I think this is my favorite. I like putting the G.I. Joe logos on the best. It is shameless branding, right? Um, like, like an elite, uh, super-secret, uh, counter-terrorist group like G.I. Joe would not really emblazon their name on every piece of equipment they have. So it's not exactly realistic, but it looks cool. So, progress. Next. Now, I do like the look of the white text on the green vehicle. I'm not complaining about that at all. I think it looks great. The problem is, white text on the white background on the sticker sheet, and they are not numbered. So, that makes it somewhat difficult to find the sticker you're looking for. The assembly of this thing was very easy. It's the application of the stickers that is taking much longer. This warning sticker goes, it can't go there. It wants me to put this sticker right here, but there's there's a grill there, there's a vent there, and I can't put a sticker there. It doesn't show that on the sticker sheet. On the diagram, it's not present, but on the actual molding of the toy, it is. So it cannot go there. It cannot go there. Where else can it go? I think this is like the His Tank. This is our one sticker that absolutely does not work as it's described in the instructions. That's just the best we can do. We absolutely cannot do it the way it's shown on here. Oh, yeah, the base sticker that goes on the 
post for the antenna, the wraparound sticker, and then we'll be done with this side. I may cut out some of the just sitting around and trying to peel these things off because that's not very interesting, but I will leave some of it in because, you know, I want you to get the experience of what this is like. Uh, in case you're considering getting one of these things and assembling it, I want you to have a preview of what to expect. And part of what to expect is a lot of hunting for the correct sticker and trying to find where exactly it goes. We have a star to put on. Done. Okay. Now this side is done. Let's do the back and we will finish up with the front. The medium sized star goes there. Let's do that right now. Okay, one star sticker on. Lots of lots of stickers here. Uh, the tail lights. It's pretty important that these are cut to the right size, otherwise there will be overhang. That's not too bad. It's really close though. That's really close. Two red brake lights done. Uh, what next? Latch. Two stickers that say latch with downward pointing arrows. By the time you see this, it should be getting pretty close to Christmas. So I hope everybody is having a lovely holiday season. My holiday is okay. Certainly better than I thought it would be. I wasn't expecting much, to be honest. But uh, there have been some bright spots, and I'm very happy about that. Okay, one more. This danger sticker goes right there. Where's the danger sticker? There it is. Okay, that's how we're doing for now. Yeah, we've got one more sticker. One more danger sticker. This piece does not go on the engine cover. Most of these stickers are going on the engine cover, but not this one. Not this guy. Oh, no, we missed one. Toolkit. There's a sticker on here somewhere that says toolkit. A lot of stickers on this thing. Did the, did the vintage one have this many stickers? I don't remember. Uh, I've reviewed it, but I don't have it sitting directly in front of me, so my memory is such that since it isn't sitting directly in front of me, uh, it's hard for me to remember. Got it. All right, we are done. We are done with the back. Beautiful. We need to do the top and the front. And we've got some arrow stickers that say oil. And those go there. Okay, and they have to go at an angle. I'm going to try to get these right. But it's going to be hard to get them at the correct angle for both of them. Let's try to get these at close to the same angle and position on opposite sides that is as close as we're gonna get okay probably can't see that it's black on top of green see this is another one there's a United States sticker that goes straight across there it is pictured on the diagram but it doesn't actually show the placement of it so what we know where it is and we'll just put it on grease 84 type G. There are two stickers and they go directly in front of the dashboard on both sides. I am thrilled to be back making G.I. Joe videos. I'm really happy to be back and I was concerned that frankly people wouldn't remember me or care but honestly most folks are still around and still watching and showing up for the live streams. A couple people I have noticed uh, have not come back around, but hopefully they will. They may not realize that I'm back yet, and uh, I miss people. That's ultimately the the best reason to come back is to, to reconnect with people. Uh, so that's been very rewarding for me, and I've been thrilled to be able to reconnect with people that I know and people that I care about, friends that I've had for years. Cool. Front is coming along. What's next? Which way does it go? It goes this way. No problem. All right, there's this diamond-shaped sticker. I am glad there are some vintage mint inbox vehicles and action figures, you know, mint on cards still around. Uh, I think that helps preserve their history. I am glad that... Uh, there are grading services and that some of those figures and vehicles are graded. That also helps preserve them. And I think that's very important. For my purposes, 
I, I just could not collect mint in box and mint on card toys. Um, it's there's nothing wrong with collecting that way. Um, uh, certainly, it's more expensive. It's it costs quite a, a, a lot more to purchase a, a toy, a vintage toy that is still uh, sealed in the box. Uh, there are much fewer of them around and fewer still that are in excellent condition. Uh, but for me, the, the it's not about the expense. In fact, not that long ago, I certainly could have uh, spent the money on uh, sealed items. Uh, I could afford it. Uh, so that's not, it's not a matter of the expense of collecting that way. What's missing is the tactile experience of uh, of collecting vintage toys. Actually, handling the toy, touching the plastic, you know, feeling it, let, you know, moving it around, you know, seeing how the whole thing works, and uh, I, I would miss that uh, if I were to collect toys that were still sealed in the box. Uh, and that's also why I. I don't think I'll ever get anything graded because, again, it's sealed. And again, I'm glad that that there are sealed examples. We need sealed examples. We need sealed examples to prever preserve the history of these classic toys. The people who collect that way uh, are providing a valuable service to uh, the community and preserving its history, and I'm really glad that they do. Where the heck does that go? That's hard to interpret. Right, let me let me see if the the box provides any. Yeah, it does. So the box wants this sticker there and that sticker there. I don't think that looks good, but you know what? I'm just I'm gonna do it. Like I said, these uh, vinyl stickers are forgiving. I absolutely can peel this up and reposition it, which will free a spot for this other sticker that is asymmetrical but okay i am no slave to symmetry it's fine real life is often asymmetrical we've got to put the big star right there again it's uh it's like unlike the united states sticker the star is not on the diagram at all but we know where it goes so let's do it this could go higher but i like it more in the center there i just i, I like it better that way there we go. I was going to say, there's a sticker here and I don't know where it goes, but I do know where it goes. It goes right there. It's just, it, at first glance, it looks different from the diagram, but it's the same. It's fine. Here's our progress. We have an empty sticker sheet, but we have one unclaimed sticker, this spot check sticker, and... I've gone through every single one of these and I don't see it. So, let's consult the the photo on the box and see if we can locate it. Whoever put the stickers on the prototype um, was more sloppy than me. And I'm kind of sloppy, but like uh, that that wa the watch head sticker right there, very uneven. Another difference is the American flag sticker on the box has the white stripes. No, I don't see it. I swear. I don't want to leave it unused. So we should put it somewhere. But where? I would uh, I would like a representative of Hasbro to call me or send me an email. I just just tell me where this thing goes. Tell me tell me where this sticker goes. It is a white text sticker that says spot check and it it doesn't go you know where i'm gonna put it i'm gonna put it on the underside how about that there sticker on the underside and we're done we have a complete assembled awe striker that took long enough i pulled crankcase out of the packaging it's a pretty good looking figure i believe this is a a new crankcase figure not based on a previous figure and um he does have one accessory, his helmet. It is removable. It has brown straps. That's nice. It looks good. His hair is a bit on the orange side. We still found a way to include orange on a G.I. Joe action figure, didn't we? Uh, but looks looks better 
better with the helmet. It's got his figure stand, which says crank case on it. So if you want to display the figure next to the vehicle, standing next to his vehicle, you can put him on the figure stand. But I, of course, would like to include the figure in the vehicle. 25th anniversary style figures are taller than vintage figures. So does he fit? Actually, he does. He fits pretty good. Now we have crank case in the awe striker. One hand on the wheel, other hand on the, the gear shifter, almost on the gear shifter. There we go. And uh, now we have this, uh, which I guess we can just put in the passenger seat because we don't want to lose it. But there we go. We have an assembled awe striker. I was able to dig out my vintage awe striker. It's a little dusty, but you can see the color on the vintage awe striker is different from the retro awe striker. The retro vehicle is a brighter green and the vintage vehicle is a duller green. The grays are also in a slightly different color. The connection between the uh, device here in front and the gun uh, is thicker. It's also a little um, softer. I was able to find one antenna. I have no idea what happened to the other one. That was my unboxing and assembly of the G.I. Joe Retro All Striker with driver crankcase. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a bigger challenge than I was expecting, but I still had a lot of fun and I hope you did too. Please subscribe to this channel for vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. I have a huge back catalog of reviews, so you want to check out all of those and support the channel on Patreon if you want to help me continue doing these videos. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon with a vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.